Psychedelics in healthcare is a controversial topic for many, as they are either regarded as game-changing, out-of-the-box ways of approaching patient care, or they are considered harmful drugs that don't belong to healthcare at all. But one thing is certain. Since most psychedelics were banned in the 1970s with Nixon's war on drugs, little to no studies went into the effects of these substances. But recently, following medical cannabis way, Small startups have started to look at psychedelics as a potentially emerging market in healthcare, while psilocybin, ketamine, LSD, and other psychedelics have made a huge leap towards being considered for mainstream use. This is Dr. Bertalan Meshko, and you are watching The Medical Futurist. Let's start with psilocybin that has the greatest promise out of all psychedelics to be used in patient care. Psilocybin is a naturally occurring substance produced by over 200 mushrooms, which you might know better as magic mushrooms. It was once unimaginable to have psilocybin and healthcare in the same sentence, and clinical studies were halted in the US since it was banned in the 1970s. But research has been back on track, and it seems psilocybin therapy might become a thing. The current studies are mainly focusing on treating depression, anxiety, addiction and other mental illnesses when psilocybin is administered with psychological support from specially trained therapists. A small controlled study from 2008, which focused on 12 participants with end-stage cancer and severe end-of-life anxiety, showed promise. After several non-drug-assisted therapy sessions, Participants underwent a crossover study in which they received a small dose of psilocybin and the active placebo across two sessions a few weeks apart. Findings show that psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy lowered anxiety and improved mood without clinically significant adverse effects. It's a very small study, but still. The same idea was applied recently for depressed medical professionals fatigued and suffering from the pandemic while other studies suggest psilocybin could even treat alcohol addiction. Review papers show that a well-administered psilocybin treatment can have positive effects on anxiety, panic attacks and depression. And we still have a long way to go with double-blinded clinical trials, but if it can help people with even end-of-life anxiety, it can truly be a potent tool for healthcare that cannot and should not be overlooked. Now, let's take a look at LSD, that had a big run in our culture before it was banned, and now it tries to have a place in healthcare again. LSD studies mainly shine a light on one of the major problems with psychedelics, namely that the effects take too long. The promise of these substances is that they might be able to offer faster and better help than current treatments and antidepressants that take weeks to kick in. But with LSD, a 12-hour psychedelic experience might be truly counterproductive. So startups are trying to modify psychedelic molecules to shorten the trip while maintaining efficiency so more patients might try it and insurance companies could be more willing to cover the treatments. But the shortened experience is exactly what ketamine offers already, which is why its therapeutic use started to go mainstream recently. Ketamine is an interesting subject to bring up in a medical context. Why ketamine seems to be interesting for people with depression is because unlike conventional antidepressants, which work by increasing serotonin levels, Ketamine appears to impact a neurotransmitter called glutamate, which is thought to play a role in regulating mood. In early trials, patients with drug-resistant mood disorders like chronic depression or bipolar disorder have seen symptoms improve often immediately, and if you want to brush it off as probably just a come-and-go rush of euphoria in a truly surprising way, both ketamine and psilocybin studies have shown that Many people have seen long-term positive changes, sometimes after a single session. In recent clinical studies, ketamine has also shown that in a weird way, ketamine lowered the chances of restarting or relapsing into cocaine and alcohol addiction. Talking about fighting fire with fire, but since Nixon's war on drugs halted all research efforts for three decades, we don't have enough long-term data to conclude how ketamine would work. 
why the potential for troubling side effects and possibility for abuse remain high. As startups keep popping up to continue the research, and at least in a clinical study setting, it's something that, that is worth looking into. What we should take from all this is that there is a potential in psychedelics, but no matter how promising their effects might seem in small studies, psychedelics can only become part of everyday medicine if their impact and safety can be proven through peer-reviewed studies and clinical trials. It's very important to point out that there is no other way around it. We need to keep studying these subjects to better understand how they work, to be able to modify them and to perhaps one day safely and responsibly administer one of them for people truly in need. People being immersed in the psychedelic world must understand that the same rules of evidence-based medicine apply to them too. If they, not all, but many, keep on producing questionable studies with tiny numbers of participants, no healthcare professional will be able to use the results. But on the other side, people like me who have never been involved in such discussions also have to acknowledge that the war on drugs and looking for new, still evidence-based treatments should not overlap. Because at least as these studies suggest, there is something worth studying in there as long as it happens in a clinical setting with our patient's betterment in mind. If you like this video, please leave a comment and subscribe below. Also, please don't forget to tap the notification bell so you will get notified about all new videos. Thank you so much in the name of the whole The Medical Futurist team.